G'day punters, welcome to Victims of the Punt. This is the season final for the autumn. We had the champagne stakes as well as the all age there on Saturday. Feels like many days ago. It's been a long weekend, obviously, for all of us, but uh, here to help me find a few winners going forward, Mark Sheen, Mark Roden, and Rob Scurry. Mark Sheen, I'll start with yourself. How'd you fare there on Saturday? Um, didn't do too much damage. I did lose, though, but uh, another disappointing track, unfortunately. Um, Ramwick has seemed to race uh, much better when there were another 10 inches of rain rather than the last two weeks where they've had a couple of drying days coming into the meeting. So uh, for the first, what, uh, eight races, um, it was fencing run by Espiona and then sort of evened out a bit the last two races. But very hard if you were tracking off the fence uh, most of the day, which just makes for bias racing, and you just got to be lucky to find the right spot. That's certainly right. Mark Roden, what did you think of the day overall? Yeah, uh, 100% agreement with the track pattern. It was, it can it can race like that when the rail's out that far, but it doesn't always, which makes it hard betting mm. early. Um, I mean, you lean to the on paces, sure, but you don't know it's going to be one lane until you get there on the day. And it's not every time, but it's about one time in three or four it's going to throw in up like that, which totally stuffs your thinking. Um, yeah, some exciting racing. Kevin Terry, obviously, getting up the fence. That was uh, that was pretty thrilling. Um, uh, I suppose the Cascadia and Tefani um, clash was exciting for Rob and I for different reasons. I was on Tefani, a three-wide joint lead, so I managed to only get beaten a half length or something. That, Incredible, um, and they gapped the others. Yeah, very, very good run by Cascadian, even though he was better suited. Um, yeah, I think probably overall, though, the uh, the track pattern was the order of the day. We'll get to that in the individual races, I suppose. Yep, and uh, Rob, yet another winning day for yourself out of the yard. You've had a really good carnival. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good to get a result on the on the big days. Um, heavy eight, though. Don't think it was heavy eight. Um, more like nine or ten, possibly. Um, very wet yesterday again at uh, Warwick Farm, 28 degrees. Um, very, very wet. Um, I don't know when these tracks are going to dry out. It's a bit of a concern, but yeah. Take Just on that, um, Rob and Mark and Pete as well, I wonder when they get, you know, warm days after they've had, you know, a foot of rain, whether the, the track becomes sort of gluey, you know, with, with that sun on it and really, really testing more than, you know, when it's just, you know, muddy when it's been raining and raining and raining. Yeah, well, it certainly seems to play differently, doesn't it? As I said at the start, we a couple of days of drying weather and the track is raced totally different to, to when we got that torrential rain um, yeah. where we were lucky to race, but I think the track raced a lot fairer that you could pick your lane where you wanted to come and then come from basically anywhere on the track, yeah. which are, uh, obviously tracks you'd rather bet on than, you know, throwing the coins up in the air and hoping to lean on the rail. So as a result, these become good meetings to review, but not good meetings to bet in, in hindsight. So let's do a bit of a <laughs> review. Uh, we'll start with race four. We'll go through race eight. The, the Champagne Stakes was race four. In terms of the overall speed, well, they've gone very slow here. 8.3 lengths slow to the 600 on punting forms data. And obviously the leader was She's Extreme and uh, managed to hold off Fireburn, who was not able to complete the triple crown. Rob Scurry, how did they parade? Uh you know, the the Phillies, uh, Fireburn got sweaty again, um, but good condition on it. Um, I thought Williamsburg backed up well. He looks like a miler to me on sort of tight. Uh, but as I said a few times, I've, I've, I'm, I've lost on these two-year-olds all season. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't know who, I don't know what to make of them. I'll be looking for something to jump out of the ground in the three-year-old year. And, um, yeah, we'll take it as it comes when Brisbane comes around. But, yeah, I don't want to – glad to see the back of these these – good two-year-olds. Yeah, Mark Shane, how are you seeing the two-year-old season or the two-year-old crop in review? Well, look, I think um, early on in the season, we weren't finding any consistency. We were having different winners basically every week. Fireburn has come along and been more consistent, though. She was, what, only faced defeat on, what, one occasion, was it? Uh, two occasions, I'm sorry. She was beaten on debut as well when she was a bit unlucky, but... Um, she's been very consistent and she's extreme, but they both have had long campaigns, so... You know they've had hard racing on on heavy tracks. Plus they had racing prior to the to this heavy track um, sort of run we had. So it will be very interesting how they uh, aim up next season. And we've seen it in the past, especially with the Colts, that they haven't come back. Uh, whether these fillies come back or not, they've been pretty dominant. But um, I think this was more to do with a gem of a ride from Tommy Berry who. He did get a picnic in front, but he went at the right time. He went at the 600, wanted to get Fireburn off the bit. 
Brett Nabdola didn't want to ride her any differently to what he had in the past. I suppose it's easy to sit in the grandstand and say maybe he should have gone a bit early or half-carded and got going, but uh, he'd ridden her that way previously and she'd done the job. But just on the day, Tommy Berry's ride won the day. Yeah, exactly. Mark Roden, what are you looking forward to this spring? Are you expecting anything out of these two, especially the top two here in this race? Uh, they're pretty, they've had great campaigns, the pair of them, but particularly Fireburn. Didn't occur to me on the day, but I was thinking about it this morning. I've actually extreme to beat Fireburn in both the slipper and the size, but uh, stayed out on Saturday. That was clever. Um, they're both pretty good. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if something either came through over the winter or um, whether Paris Dior and and or Wallinger Beasts uh, take the next step the next spring. They've had much lighter campaigns so far. Didn't aim up at the big races, so not, not so far anyway. Um, and I think they've got certainly... Uh, the potential to go right on with it in the spring. Um, but I wouldn't take anything away from these two fillies. They've had great clashes in the, the three, you know, major two-year-old races of the of the season. And, uh, yeah, I, I, look, I think Fireburn in particular is pretty tough and I wouldn't take anything away from it. I think Abdullah getting up the fence or not finding the fence from Barrier 2 uh, might have even been the difference. He, the plan, I mean, I know he didn't want to bustle it, but there was never going to be any speed here. Getting... She's extremes back from gate two and just, you know, being two lengths behind it and following it, it would have won for sure, in my opinion, but he rode it a bit cuter than that. Um, not talking through my pocket, didn't bet, but, um, yeah, it's still an exciting contest, wasn't it? Yep. Race five was the car stakes over 1,400 metres. Slow tempo once again, 2.8 lengths slow on punning form starter to the 600. And Espiona finally got the job done, this preparation, completely gapped the field. Overall figure, I must say it's reasonably plain. I'll be interested to see what uh, your opinions are. But Rob, I'll start with yourself. How did Espiona parade a bunch uh, amongst the rest of this bunch? Oh, sorry, Rob, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, she stood out like a sore thumb. Um, best I've seen her. You know, I always have with that, I've got this sort of golden rule where I don't like to jump on like boom horses or, or horses that I have no association with. And this is a horse that I've always thought has been well, well overrated just based on its parade in the past. But here she looked, um, that was chalk and cheese and um, I'm a bit dirty on myself. I didn't push some chips in on her. Uh, there's a horse in the field that I've always had a bit of time for. I lost a bit of money on when it ran at Rose Hill one Wednesday called uh, Dynasty. So I thought she's come back really well here. Um, but other than that, it's probably a bit of a thin race, hence Espiona standing out so clearly to me. Mark Sheen. Yeah, got to agree. I thought that was the best she'd paraded this time in. Um, she'd fallen to pieces there a little bit second up. Was uh, was okay in the Coolmore, but she was a bit jig-joggy. But on um, on Saturday, she just looked uh, in A1 order and uh, gapped them. Admittedly, this was a much weaker field than she had been racing. Uh, look, I, I uh, played something on Dal Cherney there at longer odds, uh, loomed up to win, but uh, dropped out. I reckon this Banana Queen's going OK. I just think she's really struggling on this uh, heavy tracks the last two runs. So watch out for her if uh, the tracks do improve, because um, I think she's a bit better filly than what uh, her last couple of runs indicate. Uh, I think she's just floundering in the ground. I've got to agree with Rob Dynasty's. Uh, look to a parade in great order. Um, she does have a tendency to get back and miss the start. That's the only problem with her, though. Okay. Mark Roden, we've had a good push for Espiona parading better this start. What do you think data-wise of the performance? Uh, I thought it was OK. It is a bit hard to rate because of the slow pace, but um, good turn of foot, switched off you know, well before the, the line, too, so it's a bit hard to get a line on data-wise, I think. Um, Look, even though she was off fence, she was, I mean, at her best on figures, she was a different class to these. And then, well, what, what the boys saw on the parade obviously backed that up and the margin uh, uh, was probably no surprise after after you put all that together. But I wonder whether she needs to um, be in a field that she can dominate like this. She was, I mean, she has more ability than these horses, a lot more ability than these horses, never really tested. When she has been tested against horses of similar, similar ability, in either the better fillies races or against the older mares. Uh, she's been found wanting. Uh, she has had one or two excuses in some of those races. I'll probably forget the Coolmore run, but whether she's a flat track bully remains to be seen. You know, she can get, she's, she was never gonna lose this race, really. Um, yeah, whether she's just a kind of horse that absolutely beats up on substandard fields or whether she can um, take that to another level against better class opposition remains to be seen. 
Okay, race six was the hallmark stakes over 1,200 metres. Even tempo here, 0.2 lengths fast to the 600. And as we've all alluded to, and it was clearly the uh, the ride of the day, Kementari, Nashrawilla, scraping paint there in the straight, managed to run over the top of Count the Rupee, a uh, big parade, was third as favourite. Rob, you found Kementari out of the yard. How did he look? Oh, as you always look, he looks sensational. What a horse this is. And for people to say that this horse is not genuine, well, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> it was brave. Up the inside, just, just busting to win. All I wanted to do was win, and obviously Nash steered it there. Um, but I, I, I was keen to bet because I thought Big Big Parade was the only horse that kind of was getting a bit sweaty. Uh, it was meant to be the good thing of the day. Um, I had a few boys on track, fans of the mailbag, tell me, put it in everything, multis, everything. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, and the other thing about Kevin Tari is I, I do think his advantage, he doesn't look like a wet tracker. He looks like a magnificent horse, but he, he does handle heavy 9, 10. And, um, you know, if he... If he he might go up to Brisbane and, and, and be a threat, especially if they get some wet tracks. It may be if, even if they don't, you know, those wait for age races with the sort of the B class, he, he could be he could be right there. This is the rebirth of Kementari. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Shane, what did you think of the race when you were watching it live? Um, well, when he ran up behind them there at the furlong, he said, oh, well, he's going to be pretty unlucky here. But, um, yeah, I didn't contemplate that he would go up the inside there and uh, just watching the race live, but then watching the replay, uh, crikey, that was a narrow cap, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> look, if you're a punter, that's the sort of ride you want to see, isn't it, if you're on Kementari? Um, but uh, I reckon nine out of ten jockeys would have just checked off heels there and and that horse would have finished third. So if you're on uh, Kementari, I'd... As Rob said, he should be sending something to Nash this week. A couple of lottery tickets, I reckon. <laughs> and, and, and and it's only for like four grand he's done this, Nash. How sick in the head is he? It's not like he's done, He's up for a, you know, a Bondi or something. Yeah. This is like <laughs> eight, eight, 80,000 to the winner. So what's that, 5% to him? Four, you know, some days he wouldn't get out of bed for that sort of money. But I think it's important to win for races for Godolphin that you continue to get rides off them. Obviously, you've got to show some some intent on these rides um, and, and Big Parade there, who a horse in the past has sometimes fallen away second up and I agree with Rob, he looked disgraceful in the yard and when he was a bit sluggish out of the gates um, and Trumbull took him on, he just you know put up the white flag there late. Yep. Mark Roden, there's been three rides for Nash on Kementari, two wins and uh, a failure there at, on the Gold Coast in the Magic Millions, although not beaten too far. Does he just need Nash on board? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, a horse who has had uh, his critics for not trying in the past to stand over jockey like Nash mm -hmm. could be the guy to get it done. Um, I thought that, yeah, interesting you say even pace. I actually agree with you. Um, I just well, shade faster than even on mine, but not much. Um, live, I thought they must be going hard. Well, they certainly went a lot harder than it was mapped. It was meant to be a walk, yeah. but... Um, what Trumbull was doing up there is beyond me. I suppose you could argue. I mean, but Trumbull's completely gone. It's an RSPCA job. But it, you could say he was riding into the pattern, but there was. it's been beaten 250 metres again. Mm. It's got to be retired. But it, it, I don't know if that was what brought Big Parade undone. Probably not, uh, judging by the yard reports. But uh, it certainly didn't help. And <laughs> if you had taken the twos on and you saw Trumbull up there and they're running 11 threes, when you're expecting them to be going to 12s, you would have been feeling a bit sick. Um, yeah, nothing I can add to what's been said about National Commentary. It was spectacular, brave, fantastic, all that. And, um, yeah, improved run from Camp to Rupee. Got Barrier 1, which was a plus, but, yeah, he's just been threatening to do something like that in a much more suitable race like this was. He, he's a pretty good horse, Camp to Rupee. Yeah, right. I think he need, think he needs a firmer track to see his best. And one comment on Trumbull, he's a horse that's notoriously slow away, so maybe the, he's, he's jumped, so they've just taken yeah. advantage of that. If he, if, he, if he jumps with them, go forward. If he doesn't, ride him to his pattern. Yeah. He, the, his nomination should be refused. He's been beaten by 20 lengths again. He's, yeah. he's just sick of it. Been a good horse for me, but um, I probably agree with that. Well, speaking of being beaten by plenty of lengths, race seven, the JRA plate over 2,000 metres, very fast tempo, 6.6 .6 lengths faster to the 600, and that's clearly sorted out a lot of these. Polly Gray's completely wrecked this field. Rob, how do they look? Uh, I I like the, 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 the trifecta here. Um, I've sort of, you know, could have 
The question was, ice buff is always going to be a risk at 2,000 metres, whereas Polly Gray was proven both heavy trackers, but why one 320 and one's 460 after the race, it, it's, it's, it's obviously wrong. They don't always know. Uh, I thought Annabelle's horses paraded well. doesn't look like a weddy. The, this is Numerian. Um, the three, it was kind of sharp and, and looking like it was really wanting to race and it's maybe improved on a slightly wetter track, but it does have form in um, Ireland on a heavy track. But, you know, get what you get, you know, Polly Gray, 2,000 metres, quality handicap or whatever this is. She's, and then she's pinged to the front and it was all over. Um, it was, it was uh, yeah, if you're on a very, very easy watch, um, never getting beaten after 50 yards. Quick word on this second favourite, the Kiwi Rob Maroney. Uh, look, I, I didn't didn't love it. Just, just yeah. it, wet, wet type, um, you know, it looked probably... You know, suited on the heavy ground. That was my, my thing. Oh, you know, if I get done by this, then maybe. But it just, just doesn't look like a, a quality horse like the, the first three in yeah. the placings. Yeah, it got beaten 21 lengths as well. Mark Shane, what are you making of this bunch? Yeah, I think Moroni pulled up lame there. I think it was one or two for, uh, out of five lame. So, uh, but still a disgraceful performance. Got absolutely <laughs> lapped there. Uh, look, I think Bowman won the won the day here. Um, he showed in 10 out of the barrier to try and find the fence and... Uh, very much like in the in the Champagne Stakes to get to the front, and even though they did roll along a little bit, they only went I think 39 seconds for the first 600 average. So um, he got a rolling in front, found the best part of the track uh, at that stage. It was just rails in run, Bar Espiona, so and she just dominated. So much too good. Uh, Ice Bath, uh, you know, she tried hard, but she just didn't run the trip on the three week back up and. Uh, away from that, as we said, Moroni, just a failure. Brutality probably didn't stay the trip, so not much you can add out of the race. Race eight on the card was the all-age stakes, the group one over 1,400 metres. Fast tempo here, but not ridiculously fast. For the class, it was 2.9 <clears throat> lengths fast to the 600, and uh, Cascadian, as Mark Roden alluded to, came from back in the field to run over the top of Tafane. Tafane, uh, Ellsberg, who was ridden for cover, was third. Rob, how did they parade in the group one? I uh, really, you know, I, I, I always love Ellsberg. Um, I've never, I've never made a cent out of him. And again, I, I had him in, in, as a winning bet for me. Um, I just had one word for Tafane. She just strutted around. She looked, she looked amazing, but drawn off the track, made it hard. Um, and I just thought, well, Barrier One and J Mac Cascadian. I've never seen him look better. Um, he'll somehow, he'll somehow find a way. Um, I've always been a bit bit harsh on Mwonga as he is a towy parader, but he seems to have filled out a fair bit and he might actually turn into a, a wait for age horse. Um, maybe maybe uh, in the spring we might see the best of him. He might measure up in the group one wait for age, sort of 1,600 and above. Um, I don't know why you... I guess the guy's got all the money in the world who owns Stefani. I think they tried to retire her before um, and brought her back. Um, why would you retire her after this performance? She, she looked like she had the race at the 350, didn't she, Mark Roden? Uh, well, she did, but she'd been three wide on a limb all the way. It was a mighty run. Uh, I heard Mike Maroney say pre-race, she's never been, he's, this is the best he's ever had her. Uh, what you saw in the yard seems to back that up, and her performance was unbelievable, really, for the way the track was playing at this stage. Um, yeah, Cascadian got that rails trail. He, he's gone really well. I mean, he's been suited. Things have panned out. He had the rails trail and went suited, but he's gone really well. That's as good as he's ever gone in his career, in my opinion. And they put a hole in the rest of them, three lengths to third or something like that. Um, not a great deal to say. I mean, really, all I should have been doing is laying forbidden love, but I think I said on Friday should have been 25s, um, completely and utterly over the top. Um, but no, I had my little play in Tefane, and yeah, that, that's racing. Mark Sheen, there was a few failures here. Uh, obviously, I was on Indo Congo, um, and uh, that horse has been beaten significantly after settling on speed, as has forbidden love and overpass as well. What are you uh, making of this race? Uh, look, I think that on, in the Congo did go to pieces a little bit when he get got uh, out um, onto the track. Um, look, maybe he's just not a wet tracker. He's, I think he's had a couple of runs now. He has fared okay um, on heavy. He was beaten by Mizzou, beaten in the Galaxy, but maybe it's just not uh, totally um, suitable for him. He's a, he's a big heavy snitch, or only a little fellow, I should say, but he's quite thick set, so... Uh, maybe it just doesn't suit him. It was a below par performance, but um, they did make a lot of use of him early. Uh, Forbidden Love, as we said in the preview, probably um, 
was going to face the task from that alley. I don't know. It's just a just a race where Cascading got things to suit. Tafane had a tough run. I think Laura Vindici is definitely going better than um, what it's reading on paper with him. He's definitely a, tr- a dry tracker, I feel. Um, so a good run for him. Ellsberg, honest as a day is long. Moanga got into a good spot uh, midfield there, but he had to course three wide and then a little bit disappointing up the straight. So, yeah, I, I think it's a lot like uh, the form over the carnival. you just got to get the right run. Well, before we finish up, I just want to get one word from Rob Scarry and one word from Mark Sheen on the performance of Huerta in race nine. Uh, Rob, how did Huerta look? He's, uh, he, he prayed very well for him. Uh, he's a horse that can get very toey in the yard. Get, when he won first up at Rose Hill, he was, he was the first horse that said, can't win, and he pissed in. Yep. Um, so he's in for a big prep wherever he goes. Maybe a bit like Ellsberg. Um, he's, 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 he's in that next sort of progressive pushing up to the the group ranks and maybe look out for him in um, Brisbane. Yeah, Mark Sheen. Along, 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 with, along with Laura Vindices as well, who seems to be parading better at every start. Yeah, Mark Sheen, that, do you think I should it... be following my cash with Huerta? Absolutely. He's been right. aimed at the Brisbane Carnival. Um, this was just a tick over run um, and he's been aimed at um, some big races up there and I think he'll be much better suited uh, um away from these bog tracks, even though he's been handling them quite well, and he's handled them in France okay as well. But uh, this distance was never really going to suit him 1,400. Um, even though he'd been trialling up well, he was uh, against it uh, with the pattern of the race had to come a little bit wide. But uh, I think you'll follow him in Brisbane and get your cash back for sure. All right, beautiful. Okay, that brings us to the end of the show. And for this season, I'll get a performance of the carnival from each of you. Rob, what stood out as your best performance? Oh, sorry, you're on mute again, Rob. Nash, Nash on Kementari for me. Um, <laughs> Recency and, bias. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, backed it, and just, just, I just love the bravery of both horse and jockey, and uh, and the madness of it. Um, it was, it was beautiful. Yep, Mark Sheen, what stood out to you over the last couple of months? Um, look, I think Fireburn's win in the slipper was was unbelievable, considering um, she got flattened and still bolted in. So I think it was, that was an amazing uh, performance. And I think the improvement of Marzu since um, he's had the ultimate snip um, and the way he's settled down, look, he looks like he... In the old days, he looked like he'd been up the cross all night, and now he looks like he's in the nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mark. That's and, awesome. yeah, love him, Marzu. He's been a great horse for, for, I think, everyone this carnival. Yeah, exactly. Mark Roden, what stood out to you over the last few months? Uh, Nature Strip, the best grand final specialist yeah. beside Aston Martin. Um, <laughs> and one of the, you know, he, I'm well past the age where I get emotional about racing, but he sort of takes me back to when I was a kid or a teenager and I had my favourite horses. He's my favourite horse. Um, uh, I know I had a few disagreements with Shane Chilly about this. He has different views on all this sort of stuff, but um, no, I, I just like I just really like his style, like him as a horse. And what's he won? Three TJs and an Everest now? It's, uh, it's not a bad wreck for CV, is it? Yeah. Is he definitely going to Royal Ascot? Well, as far I as I know, so. I think yeah. you, you, you but, wouldn't think he'd be beaten if he was in one piece over there. But, what, but why, would, why would he um, take on home affairs? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense for Uncle. Well, it doesn't make sense for the stable. Uh, I'm sure the owners of Nature Strip don't care, but, yeah, maybe what we're all trying to talk about. Oh. Well, exactly. Just uh, you know, Coolmore make him an offer to stay home. I'm not saying that kind of thing does happen, but um, you know, uh, well, uh, I mean, maybe Chris has got enough money and he, he really wants to stamp himself on the world stage. And Nature Strip's probably a good thing in uh, down the straight over there. And Home Affairs isn't. Well, if you put a, you put an extra zero on Home Affairs if he wins over there. Yeah, exactly. Nature Strip's the, the uh... depends if he's got enough money or not. Mm. All right, anyway. it'll be fascinating over the next couple of months. Uh, racing this weekend, you've got Canterbury tomorrow, uh, Newcastle Thursday, Kembla Grange, and just a normal Randwick meeting there on Saturday. So Mark Sheen, Mark Roden will catch up on Friday. We'll preview that meeting there for Saturday, but uh, it's going to get a little bit different there for the next couple of months, I presume, with uh, no more feature racing, but we might get some dry tracks. No, no, <laughs> you're not going to. <laughs> really? Now the carnival's over, I thought it's good for... Good for as far as the eye can see now. You know, We're going to need three. Scone, good for at Hawkesbury. 
I mean, we're going to need a month of no rain, you know, for the Sydney yeah. track to, to be, go back to a good four, I think. Like, I think Warwick Farm was very wet yesterday. I think that, well, when was the last... Had... Well, Warwick Farm, in my lifetime, has never been done up. So, yeah. and, you know, when are they going to start spending... Look, we've, sp- we've spent a fortune on, on races for two hump camels, like highways and midways. Every week, we got, we're throwing millions at this, two millions at that. Yeah. I can never remember Warwick Farm in my lifetime being upgraded. Rose Hill was upgraded once, I don't know, 30 years ago. It's been a two-lane highway. Look at Ramwick over the carnival there, raced well for two days when it was Quagmire. And since then, we've had two meetings in a row where you had to be in, you know, certain lanes again. It, it's just never-ending. When are we going to spend some money on tracks? Agree. It's a very good point. Agree, to Hall. And I'm not sure we're going to get what, an answer. Yeah, we, should, we should sell up and move out, Mark. Go <laughs> somewhere where we can get some... Decent, you know, decent tracks. Move to Tassie. <laughs> Tassie. <laughs> it's oh, I, 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 that was the answer I was expecting. Yeah. Oh, I, I, my sister's done it, but they, they tell me um, the the track in Hobart's beautiful, and it's not a one lane highway. Well, it wasn't there for a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> PVL should just try and buy Flemington and just move all of Sydney racing to to Flemington, <laughs> and they can race the other way as well. They can race in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, Sydney racing on a Wednesday uh, at Flemington. Yeah. 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 All right, Drive guys. Turn. Thanks very much for the autumn. It's been great. Uh, we'll look forward to dissecting some more later in the year, but uh, enjoy the winter months. And we'll still fire out a few previews in the, in the short term. But uh, until then, guys, go well. See you, guys.